Hi guys, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be looking at triggering a simple animation on a object. Now we're also going to take it one step farther and use a slider to control that animation. So for my animations here, I've just got this free Dungeon Traps package here from the Asset Store. It's just called Dungeon Traps, and we're just going to use one of these pre-made animations so I don't have to make my own. Now I've already imported it into my project here and it's under Dungeon Traps. Then I'm going to go to Prefabs and grab one of these Dungeon Traps. I think I will use this uh, PF Spoon Trap. And if we go to our inspector we can see that it has an animation component on it. So note this is not the animator component which requires a animation controller. But in fact this is just an animator and it's set to automatically play so if we push play it should swing around already if we double click on it we can change some settings so I've got the set to just once we want it to play once and let's set this to not play automatically so that we can trigger it by playmaker I'm gonna make an empty game object and call this playmaker controller and we'll use this for our Playmaker FSM. So I'm going to add a new FSM to this and I'll call the first state Do Animation. And on this state, we can just go to the Actions browser. And as you can see, I've already been working on this. We just want to use the one called Play Animation. So again, this is not the animator, but the animation. And it's as simple as this. We change the owner of the game object to specify game object. I'm just going to grab the spoon trap and drag it in. And then it will give me the options to choose which animation. So I've just chosen it here. And that's it. That's all I have to do. Let's hit play and see what happens. And there we go, Playmaker's Trigger Day. It's as simple as that to play one of these very simple game object animations. Now, if we want to use the slider to control it, we need to make sure that we set the animation speed to zero. So set animation speed. And again, we have to choose what we want to change. And that's the spoon trap. Choose the animation name and set the speed to zero. So now when we play, the animation is playing but the speed is now zero. The next thing we want to do is set the animation time. We want to feed it a specific time for it to play. And so just like before, we have to specify which game object, choose the animation, and then we can set the time. So I'm going to make a new float variable here and I'll call it animation time and I want to change this animation time every frame so we need to check that off so that it continues to check over and over and over again this action set animation time so I'm gonna go ahead and save this you can make a new scene and do that the next thing we're gonna to need to do is create a UGUI slider and mine has appeared nicely on the screen. If you don't see yours, go to your scene and click on your 2D option here. And just make sure you grab the slider element and you can move it up and down like this to where you want it in the scene. I'm going to put mine closer to the bottom. So I go back to my game view and there I can see it at the bottom. Now, to find my spoon trap again, here it is. Let's turn off the 2D. And I want my spoon trap just to be right in the middle of my screen like this. And now I'm just going to choose my camera, choose game object, and then say align with view. So now my scene view and my game view are now aligned. Okay, as you notice, I can't drag this here in the game. It has to be playing. 
So I'll save this again and hit play. And you can now see that I can drag the slider, but nothing's happening. So we need to pass the value of this slider into our playmaker variable. And to do that, we're going to need something called the UGUI proxy to access this UGUI information. So we'll choose Playmaker. I'm going to use Tools, and I'm going to use the uh, Ecosystem. Sorry, it's under Add-ons, Ecosystem, and use the Ecosystem Browser. Now, I've already searched UGUI and installed this UGUI proxy full. So you just choose Get, and it's going to download all these UGUI actions and recompile your Playmaker. It might take a minute or two. And once you do that, you'll now have the UGUI actions in Playmaker. We have all these actions. But we don't actually need the actions. We need what comes with the actions, which is a kind of proxy to help pass information between the UGUI and Playmaker. So what I'm going to do is choose the slider and go back to my inspector. And now on the slider, I'm going to add a new component. And this may not show up on my screencast. I'm sorry about that. My recording doesn't seem to like to record the component selector. But I'm going to choose Add Component. And I'm typing the words Playmaker. And you can't see me, probably. And I'm at choosing the one called, you'll see it now, Playmaker UGUI Component Proxy. This is the one you want. And what I want to do is change this to set FSM variable. And I'm, my target is not the owner. I want my target to be a game object. And the game object I want is my Playmaker controller, because this is where all my Playmaker stuff is. And now it's going to give me a list of the different FSMs. I only have one FSM. And float variables it gives me all the different float variables. I only have one called animation time. So that's perfect. So now it's automatically going to feed from here my animation, uh, the slider to my animation time variable on Playmaker here. So let's hit play. And there we go. As you can see, as I drag my slider back and forth, it animates my spoon trap here. And as fast or as slow as I want to drag it, and it works. So just remember here when you set up your Playmaker controller here, and I've got uh, one state. The first one, um, you don't want, you don't need to change anything. You just need to tell it which uh, component to play. The next one, make sure you don't have every frame set. We don't want it to be setting the speed every frame. We just want to set it once and change it to zero. And the last one is to set animation time and create a new variable. It's going to be a float. And make sure you set this one to every frame because we want it to constantly be checking as we drag the slider back and forth. So that's how you do it. That's how you play in a, a simple animation on a game object as well as use the slider to control that animation.